Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Let's kick off the Yomungunda with the making of before we get into the grittier in-game details here. You can check out the timestamps on screen right now if you want to skip to a certain segment. Otherwise, buckle up, we're going for a ride. So to kick it off, we have the making of and the character design and the inspiration for this new character. To start with, they had some of the picked designs and that type of culture. They drew a lot of inspiration from there. And then they looked at Nordic culture and they took a little bit of inspiration from there. They went, went for Nordic mythology and that's where they got the Jormungandr from in the first place. And there is a ton of current pop culture that's viewing Vikings again. I'm sure you've heard of the show by the same name. And it's not just the one, there's a lot of shows out there about Nordic culture and medieval Nordic civilization. So there was a ton to draw inspiration from. And then they went with the zealots and the crazies and the culture that comes with that. And essentially the end of world worship that some people have or had. So that was the jumping off point for designing this character. Beyond that, when they started developing some lore for this character, these are cultists who believe the world has ended. The cataclysm, the reason for honor exists in the way it does right now, that was the end of the world. Or better known in Norse, Ragnarok. They believe that Thor has lost the fight. So, after defeating Thor, yes, Jorun Gandar stole Mjolnir and it's flipping the bird. So we've had a little bit of stuff up on screen for the last little while I've been talking. These are inspirations, concept arts, and designs for the characters, them being Holda and Gritar. We've seen some rough designs for what the armors they've designed for him will be. We also see some different occultist masks, blood, and the mouths, the way they do that, and the cultist piercings. We also get a slight preview of how ornaments will work, which is the same as the other Year 3 heroes. They will be shoulder based. These are more on the bicep than they are up on the shoulder pad though, as this character doesn't have a lot of armors with shoulder pads. And then we have the hammers, which are very heavy. They are very much fantasy hammers, and not at all war hammers, but that is the name they will be given, is war hammers. They put a ton of work into changing how the textures work for this to give the impression of materials, and just to show how heavy these things are, and they did a wonderful job on that. Beyond that, we do have the individual lore for the various characters, those being Gritar and Hilda. So for Hilda's story, she was in a village and some people came to seek shelter, and they pretended to join the occult and pretended to worship Jormungandr. However, she saw through that. She realized that they were only there seeking shelter, they didn't really believe, and they didn't want to participate. So she decided to take matters into her own hands, and massacred all of them. So after doing that, the tides came in and washed away all of the bodies. There was a large wave and it simply swept them all away. She didn't need to care about them anymore. So she took this as a sign of the gods and proof that this is the true path that she needs to take. So then she joins the Vikings and here we are. Moving on to the male, Gritar. His story is a little less violent and more humorous in my opinion. He was in a battle with some knights and he was getting his butt kicked. Apparently not a very good fighter. The girl's the better one. And he's getting demolished in this fight against the knights. So he is under the impression that the only way he could win this battle is through a miracle. And that's exactly what he gets. Suddenly a large wave crashes up upon the shore and just sweeps all of the knights away. And that is his recruitment into the Jormungandr occult. So those are the two canon characters. The same thing as with the Hidokiri and the Black Prior, is we don't play them unless if you want to. But those are the lore for those heroes, so we have a starting point on how they joined the occult, and how the Jormungandr operate. And then I believe next week we will be getting the blog post for these, so any details I've mistook from the livestream and additional details will be posted on the Ubisoft website. However, those aren't up at the time of recording, so I'm simply going based on what I understand from the live stream. So from there, let's go ahead and jump into move set. To kick this off, I think I will leave with the description that was given by Stefan, because it is pretty great. Can you give us an overall description of the Jormungand? Can you like three words? Three you want words. three words? Yeah, please. In season three of year three, you want three words to yes, describe this exactly, hero? Yes, exactly, Stefan. All right, can we do it? Let's see. 
Stamina freaking monster. Stamina freaking monster. So yeah. these three words are together. Yeah. What you're saying. That's okay. right. The three as a whole. I like it. All right. And we are going into move set. So to start it off, all of her attacks will be two hit chains. You will have a starter and a finisher, and that's how it will operate. So the first chain would be the light light, which has a undodgeable property on the finisher. The second is the heavy heavy, which has an unblockable property on the finisher. Then we have enhanced lights on all light attacks, so that you aren't interrupted by being blocked. Then we have the zone attack, which can be chained into either a heavy or a light. It is a chain starter. Then we have the dodge forward into heavy. This ability has hyper armor, or for honor armor as they're calling it now. Then for the final basic kit, we have the sprinting attack. She also has a unique guard break where she can perform a bash to drain some stamina. And in the same vein as a guard break, there is Jotun's Surge, which will give you a bash that drains stamina. And this can be chained smoothly into other attacks. In similar vein to Jotun's Surge, there is Jotun's Farewell as well. This is a bash finisher. She has Jotun's Grudge, which is a parry react, gives you a bash. This can also be followed up with any combo attack. We'll be coming back to this one later. Then there's Jotun's Gift, which is the starter. It chains into no all of your normal attacks. And in addition to normal attacks, you can do it into a throw. Then we move into the various ways that she can make you unbalanced, starting with a basic punch. Her chain finishers for heavies also knock you down if you're out of stamina. And then here's the reason you want to get people out of stamina. This very strong 50 damage punish. You have the native hammer slam from just any knockdown. You can then chain into this from any throw while out of stamina. You can do Yotan Surge into a Hammer Slam. You can do a Guard Break into a Hammer Slam. You can do a Parry out of stamina punish into a Hammer Slam. And if your opponent is almost out of stamina and then you parry them, putting them out of stamina, you can do a Yotun's Grudge into a Hammer Slam. This will be extra useful as it allows you to knock down a person who wasn't out of stamina through the parry by initiating a Guard Break, which is the button press to do a Yotun's Grudge and knock them down, thus giving you your out of stamina punish. You also get your standard Heavy Finisher into a knockdown as well. Additionally, you get your standard Heavy into a knockdown if they're out of stamina and you get a heavy into Yotun's Farewell, which will also knock them down. The first feat is Yotun's Salve. This gives you healing on any bash. The second feat is Hammer's Favor. This grants you a shield anytime you use Hammer Slam. Next up for tier 3, we have Zealot's Bolt. This is an active ability, and it drains your stamina to zero if you get hit by it, thus giving the Jormungandr a reason to punch you and get the knockdown punish. And then the ability that everyone knew was coming. Twilight of the Gods is an ability where your character will smash the ground while screaming Ragnarok. This ability will knock down everybody inside of the circle, giving you the ability to pounce on them and get your hammers smash. It also does a decent share of damage by itself. That does wrap up all of the move set and feats for the new hero, the Jormungandr. On screen are the move set slides, so you can go ahead and read over them. With that though, I will go ahead and show off the armor and weapon designs for the new hero. Starting off, we have some very basic mauls, and moving to the left here, we go to higher tiers, so the first set is gray. And they've done a really wonderful job showcasing these 
that as you go up in quality, they do get higher quality and they are more extravagant and actually look meatier and stronger as weapons. Some of these do look kind of out of place, like the wolf's head. I'm not a huge fan of that, but I'm sure somebody out there is. But here's the weapons showcase. Pretty neat. Let's move on to armor. We do get a very large variety of armor with this new character, from anything from a bathrobe to a actual piece of armor. It's not anything too extravagant for actual armor, but it's metal plates and something that looks like it might actually protect you if you were to get hit wearing it. We also get some of these more butcher style robes, such as the thing that Raider currently has. I'm not a huge fan of those, but I do think they look pretty okay on this new character. And for those of you worried about constantly being bald with face paint, there are helmet options as well. I believe there's only three of them, so you don't get too big of a variety, but you do have the ability to wear a helmet. Thanks, bye-bye. So for those of you who stuck around this long, thank you. I really appreciate you watching. I hope I covered enough of the new hero for you. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.